I'm John Costner, Product Manager for Equipment Controls with Frick by Johnson Controls. Today we would like to speak to you about our new Quantum HD Unity System Controller. The Quantum HD Unity System Controller and Energy Management Solution is your 24-7 virtual refrigeration operator. This is accomplished by the controller being in a perpetual state of monitoring and evaluation. Through these evaluations relative to the configuration, both the proper and most efficient actions are taken to control your refrigeration processes as your system conditions vary throughout the course of each and every day. To do this, the Quantum HD Unity System Controller incorporates best refrigeration control practices and strategies along with proven hardware and software for a reliable, easy to use central control system, primarily geared for the cold storage warehousing and other similar processes. As the name implies, the Quantum HD Unity System Controller is all about unification of various controls into one. The navigation to specific areas of the system from engine room control to evaporator control to condenser or vessel control is as easy as touching the product banner at the top of the display and making a selection as to where in the system you want to go to next. You can also touch anywhere in each system section to go directly to those areas. The Quantum HD Unity System Controller consists of two enclosure designs. The first being the main system controller enclosure you see here that houses both the control for the system and the analog and digital for the engine room, condenser, and vessel segments of the system. We will detail functionality of each of these later. Also in the main panel are other components required for connectivity and other system integration requirements. The second enclosure is for the evaporator I.O., which is smaller panels, up to 10 panels total. That can be located or mounted almost anywhere in your facility to lower installation costs or fit the maintenance model for the facility. When we discuss the evaporator portion of the control, we will cover this panel in more detail. At this time, we'll go ahead and open the main Quantum HD Unity System Controller enclosure and take a look at the controllers, the I.O. layout, and the other components. With the doors open, one of the first things any Frick Factor technician will notice is that 90 plus percent of the hardware used in the Quantum HD Unity system controller is the exact same hardware used in every Quantum HD compressor controller ever built. What this does is this drastically reduces the learning curve for integrating sensors or troubleshooting of the I.O. boards and the processor boards. This also lowers the spare parts inventory burden on the owner, as these are all the same boards and components used in the compressor controllers that they currently have. So let's go ahead and take a quick little walk around the inside of the Quantum HD Unity controller. Starting on the left side panel door at the top is the condenser vessel controller. Then from that you have the evaporator controller, and then at the bottom is the engine room controller. Just below that, you'll see a, a, a fan, which is included in every uh, panel. The fan, of course, provides ventilation to make sure that we're removing any of the heat that builds up inside of the panel. Starting in the back at the top, we have our I.O. panel uh, that has all the digital and the analog boards for the condenser control. Below that is the I.O. boards for the vessel control. And then below that is the I.O. boards for the engine room control. On the next panel down is all the ancillary components, power supplies, ethernet switch, things necessary for the operation of the controller itself. We also designed the inside of the Quantum HD Unity controller uh, with the staggered panels for another purpose which makes the installation much easier. We deliberately guide all the sensor wiring and the digital wiring coming up from the system itself from, from the rest of the plant through these panduits that correspond to each I.O. board that deliberately runs the wiring into that panduit and just keeps everything much cleaner. With regard to entry to the panel, the panels at the bottom are removable, so all the entry for all these sensors and digital inputs come in through the bottom of the panel. You can actually make your entry through the side, but it'll come in through the lower side and then up through the bottom. So let's go ahead and close up the doors at this time, and we'll take a look at some of the major control features of the Quantum HD Unity controller. Okay, this time we want to go ahead and show the system configuration, which is the first step to the total configuration of all the individual uh, parts and components of the Quantum HD Unity system controller. Uh, first to get in, we need to log in, and we'll enter in a login number that's been set up in the configuration. Uh, this may take a few seconds for the processor to recognize the login. Now, once we're logged in, if you go into system configuration, 
you want to set up your network by going into system networking. Uh, as you can see, our network is already established, uh, but if it was not, you would go in and do a scan network. This takes several moments to do, uh, so we're going to bypass that. We already have it done. Once you're done, you would hit Submit Changes to submit that network and establish the components you're going to be working with in this control system. Uh, from this point, uh, if you go back, and you go into system configuration, you also go into security. Uh, in security, of course, you would set up all your passwords, your PIN numbers for all of your operators, either at a basic, an operator, or a service level, depending upon their proficiency level. Once that's done, uh, you'd go into panel, and you'd set up your language, your temperature units, your pressure units, also your date, time, all that basic information for the panel, and then submit those changes. Uh, next thing, you may want to do a screen calibration. Uh, you want to calibrate the touch screen so that all the touches that you make as you navigate through the screens are hitting the right uh, points and the, uh, the proper response occurs. We also have a clean screen. The clean screen basically deactivates the screen for a period of time, default for one minute, whereas you can clean the screen without having to worry about hitting any hot points or causing any accidental uh, things to occur that you didn't intend. Uh, once you're all done with that, uh, simply uh, log out of the controller. Uh, at that point, once you're logged out, you can walk away. Any other users that want to come up and interact with the controller will have to enter in their PIN number, log into the system to make any changes that they want to do. Okay, at this time, we like to take a look at the engine room control in particular. Uh, to do that, you basically, again, touch anywhere in the area, of the section for engine room control and you can see the home screen. But before we take time looking at that, let's just go back into menu and configuration. The three main parts of configuration for the engine room control is the refrigerant detection, ventilation control, and then floor warming. So let's go ahead and go back now to our home screen and just take a look and see what all those items look like once they're configured. So our operating values that we show shows the refrigerant detectors. We could do up to four of those. Under four, glycol return temp and supply temp as well as under four temperature readings, and again, up to four of those. If you enable some analog auxiliary channels uh, to read other uh, analog values, you could uh, configure and read those here in our user-defined system operating values. Uh, with regard to our ventilation control, uh, again, we do up to four uh, VFD or fan outputs. Each one of those could be a VFD, basically to control temperature and or uh, ventilate the engine room in case there is a refrigerant leak uh, at, the, at the level that we would need to ventilate that. Uh, initi initiate emergency ventilation could actually be done from the home screen simply by touching that button and hitting yes. And now we'll go into emergency ventilation where all the fans will come on and uh, if it's a VSD, it'll go and ramp up to, to full speed. Uh, if you want to return to normal ventilation, you simply touch that button and hit yes and then you'll return to uh, normal ventilation which will be basically for temperature control. Again, we have our floor warming down here, which is our glycol pump and our glycol heating. Uh, basically, those will be turned on and off based on the temperatures of the underfloor sensors as well as the glycol return temp. So that basically wraps up the engine room control as it is today. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to condenser control. Okay, to uh, access condenser control, again, from the system overview screen, you simply touch anywhere in the condenser area of that screen and you see the home screen for the condenser control. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look back on menu briefly as far as the configuration uh, points. Uh, basically, you have your condenser information, uh, pumps and fan configuration, summer sequence, winter sequence, condenser VFD control, condenser control set points, condenser control overrides, proportional integral control, uh, and, and also refrigerant detection. Uh, those all items get configured uh, at the uh, startup of the system. And let's just go ahead and take a look back at the home screen uh, just to review what the condenser control uh, home screen looks like. Basically looking at our operating values with our control method. Uh, our control method uh, currently is dynamic and basically what that means is our control set point will vary up or down relative to ambient conditions in what the condenser is capable of doing. We also have our condensing pressure A. We also have a condensing pressure B as a backup or redundancy, if you will, to condensing pressure A value. If there was a problem with the sensor for condensing pressure A, condensing pressure B sensor would, would be 
put into place of it and all the control would start working based on that value. So you wouldn't have any stoppage of the operation. Uh, regarding the dynamic control, we look at our outside air temp, our outside air humidity, and our calculated wet bulb temp to establish our calculated uh, optimal condensing set point. Uh, we also then have system operating values here again. If you set up analog values, you'd be able to look at those there. Uh, looking over here, we have that we are in summer mode and we are adjusting whether we're in summer mode or winter mode automatically. That's done by a temperature set point, whereas if the temperature is above a certain set point, we go into summer mode. If it's below a set point, we transition to winter mode. Uh, here we have our, con our condenser steps laid out. Uh, we have water pump one, water pump two, and VSD fan one, VSD fan two. So those steps will come on relative to the control set point in order to maintain the condensing pressure at the desired value. At this point, we'll go ahead and move on to our vessel control. Okay, just as we did to get into engine room control and the condenser control, to get into vessel control, we simply just touch uh, that section on the system overview screen and we see the home screen uh, for our vessel control. Uh, with the vessel control, we can do up to three vessels, up to four pumps per vessel. Uh, we have all three configured, so you see all three listed here on the home screen. If we wanted to go into one particular vessel, we simply touch anywhere in that area, and we go to the home screen for that particular vessel. Again, you see a lot of values here, and we actually have the vessel value, the vessel level shown, and then our steps or the number of pumps that we have. But before we do that, let's just go back real quick in the configuration again for the vessel as we did the engine room and the, uh, the condenser control. And basically we have our vessel uh, enable. You can, one, you can enable uh, one vessel, two vessels, or three vessels. Then we have our level control set up, our pump control configuration, and our safeties, and again, we have proportional integral control for analog auxiliaries uh, and so forth, basic uh, common configuration amongst all the different controls. Uh, let's just go back to the home screen uh, briefly. Uh, again, we have our uh, level set point, uh, which is 50%. Our actual value right now is 48.9% and the pressure in our vessel. We also have pump protection, where we look at the inlet and the outlet pressure of each pump and we look at that differential and determine whether or not that pump may be in a state of cavitation for low differential, or we go into automatic pump bypass if we have a high differential, which means a lot of the evaporators have shut off. So the differential pressure between the inlet and the outlet uh, has exceeded a certain value. We turn on auto pump bypass, so we make sure that we ensure uh, adequate fl flow through the pump. Uh, we can stop our pumps here on, on the screen. Uh, we also do rotate pump order, which can be done right from the screen or based on a set point of a certain amount of run hours. Say, for instance, if you set that at 100 and every time the pumps run 100 hours, you rotate the pumps uh, if you have that option available to you. Uh, here we're running three pumps, but we're only op actually operating two at a time. So we can rotate that order to maintain even run hours. Or again, again, you can rotate the order right here on the screen. Um, that's pretty much uh, a good example of the vessel control. So let's go ahead and and move along to our evaporator control. To reduce installation costs, the evaporator remote I.O. panel can be mounted anywhere there's a 28 by 24 inch space available. Each evaporator remote I.O. panel controls up to three sequential zones. Panel one controls zones one through three. Panel two controls zones four through six, with a total of 10 panels controlling up to 30 zones. The remote I.O. panel is connected to the evaporator controller in the main panel via an RS-485 serial communications link. This allows a remote I.O. panel to be mounted up to 2,000 feet, well over one half kilometer total cable distance away from the evaporator controller in the Quantum HD Unity System Controller panel. At this time, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the remote evaporator I.O. panel. The typical arrangement for a remote I.O. panel will be one analog and one digital board. We have smartly compiled the I.O. across these boards to minimize the need for additional hardware. Only options such as reheat control or additional digital auxiliary inputs and outputs would require a second digital board. HOA switches are an option. They can be added during manufacturing or easily added in the field if HOAs are later deemed to be necessary. It is a simple plug and play process to add these in the field. No wiring needs to be removed and relocated 
to install HOAs after the installation. A heater can be provided and is necessary if the ambient temperature for a remote I.O. panel is less than 14 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 10 degrees Celsius. The heater is also an easy field add if deemed necessary. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a look at our evaporator control and I went ahead and just went right back into the evaporator control rather than starting at the system overview screen. Uh, one of the reasons I did this, I wanted to show our load shedding overview as well. Uh, this is one of the things that we've added into our evaporator control, whereas we can turn units off uh, either based on uh, a manual, uh, we go into load shedding manually, or we do it based on KW limitation or a schedule or the combination of a schedule and a KW limitation. And again, basically what we're doing is we take evaporator units offline, either by stopping them completely or transitioning those to a higher temperature set point as a means of saving energy during a certain period of the day. I'm just gonna go back to our zone overview screen and I'm gonna go ahead and select the zone and I'm gonna pick my minus 20 degree freezer. And this is the home screen for the minus 20 degree freezer. Uh, I see my entering temperature, my room temperature, and my product temp. We can control this zone off of any one of those uh, temperatures. Uh, the user defined temp actually is what we see here is our product temp. We gave it a name of product temp, but you could put that temperature probe anywhere and control from that, or again, you could control from room temperature uh, or entering temperature. Uh, we also have a humidity input. So if you were to monitor the humidity in the room, uh, we could drive out humidity by running the temperature colder in the room for a period of time to do that. Uh, we also look at our evaporator pressure. If you were to install evaporator pressure transducer, uh, we could monitor the pressure during defrost. So if during defrost, during the hot gas period of defrost, if you did not build sufficient pressure, we could tell you that. Maybe there's something the matter with the suction valve. Or if you built up too high a pressure during the hot gas period, uh, we could advise you of that as well. Um, over here you see on the right hand side, uh, this zone is currently active. Uh, you could disable a zone by simply turning it off or you know, go ahead and reactivate it. And now you see a status change. Right now we're satisfied as you can see here on the screen. Uh, we have up to four temperature control modes that we can do. Uh, you can have your active mode select either be manual or based on a schedule. So as you go through the course of the week or even the course of the day, you could change your control set point for any particular zone up to four times. Uh, we have our load shedding, uh, which we just discussed a few moments ago. Uh, that is uh, auto based on whether you're doing it on a KW limitation or a schedule or a combination. Uh, but you could also set that for manual and initiate load shedding on demand, if you will. Basically, we have our operation here where it shows the status of our liquid valve, uh, our fan, and then the suction valve. And then also if you're in defrost, it tells you what stage you're in, how much time is remaining in this, that stage, uh, and how it is initiated. You can initiate defrost in three different ways. One by schedule, one by starting to defrost here on the screen, or one by energizing a digital input. To look at another zone, you simply touch up here, uh, you get a drop down, you select the next zone that you want to look at, and now you see all that same information for the next zone. And again, we will control up to 30 zones across 10 remote evap IO panels. That pretty much wraps up a basic review of our evaporator control. Uh, at this time, uh, we're going to move on to some of the other services and programs we'll be offering with the Quantum HD Unity System Controller. Remote accessing the Quantum HD Unity System Controller is, is very easy. It's just a simple matter of opening up a web, web browser and typing in the IP address or hitting an icon that you have established on, on your tablet. This is extremely helpful in the system or in the plant, uh, whereas if you're working on a remote I.O. panel, which does not have a display, if you have remote access, you can simply look at what's going on with that remote evaporator I.O. panel uh, from, your, from your tablet. If you want to go and look at some of the other items in the system, you simply touch the banner, select the next item you want to look at, and navigate and make any changes, any observations that you may want to be able to do. You're logged in at the same level as if you were standing in front of the panel. You can do anything as if you're actually there. Um, we, off we offer access up to five users independently from remote locations. This is a great collaborative effort. If you're having a problem you want to work through, 
You can get other people engaged, someone at Frick possibly, or some of your other senior technicians, or your Frick Factor technicians. So the remote access is very simple. There's no need to purchase possibly expensive proprietary software to do so. It's just a web browser. Open up the internet and you have access. Frick by Johnson Controls will also be offering additional services to aid in the commissioning and a long-term support. Among those are on-site startup commissioning, virtual startup assistance, as well as custom drawings, which will be based on custom names given to the IO points for the various parts of the system control. That concludes this presentation on our new Quantum HD Unity System Controller, the economical central control and energy management solution for your refrigeration processes. It does need mentioning that the development of features for this product will continue, as they did with the Quantum, the Quantum LX, and now with the Quantum HD controller. As the industry evolves, Frick by Johnson Controls will evolve with it, delivering the best practices for industrial refrigeration controls in a reliable, easy to use central control and energy management solution. If you have any questions on the Quantum HD Unity System Controller, contact your Frick brand sales representative. Thank you for your time.